Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. I'm making this sharpening station, mostly, for my carving chisels. In my shop, I have several options to sharpen my tools, like this water wheel sharpener. I don't use it often. I find the stone grit mm, too coarse. The other side has a leather strap, mm, but I don't like it either. I also have a nice double-sided water stone with a holding jig. But by far, my favorite sharpening tool is this work sharp. It's all different grits of sandpaper. It goes up to 6,000 and it's glued on a piece of glass that spins. I even have a felt pad charged with abrasive. Sharpening a chisel is as easy and fast as this. I like this a lot. Uh, but for my carving chisels, uh, it's not to my liking. So I would like to do something to make it easier to sharpen them. I will also use it to sharpen my carving knives. Yes, because I have a hard time sharpening them too. I tried with special shaped water stones and the flat one too. And I only managed to damage my stone. But with a leather strap, I was able to get my carving tools to my liking. In the future video, I take 30 seconds to show you how I made it. So I took the decision to make a sharpening station with this leather belt I bought. To do this, I'm only going to use a lot of small and not so small, oddly shaped pieces of plywood I have lying around in my shop. I'm going to start with two wheels for the leather belt. After cutting the pieces a bit bigger than both wheels, I glue them together. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. But I still can use more oddly shaped plywood for the base. But before doing that, I remove a bit of the two smaller pieces. Then I can glue both pieces on top of a big one that's big enough to make the base. Uh, it's not easy to find a way to hold all this in place while the glue dries, but I manage anyway. I will insert those two bearings in the top wheel, but I have a big problem. A 3 quarter inch hole is too small and a 7 8 is too big. Uh, unfortunately, the Matrix Forstner bit set I bought from China got lost in the mail. Now I need a solution. I found one, but spoiler alert, it didn't work. So I'll try not to spend too much time on this. But here was my idea. I turned this piece of plywood into a wooden puck and glue it onto one of the wheel glue apps I made. I even glue this between a piece of paper so it will be easier to separate later on. I use clamps and wait for the glue to dry. Then I cut both wheels so they won't be as squarish. Here they are. The first one was a charm. I only drill a half inch hole in the center. Those drill bits, I have plenty of them. But for the other one, it's another story. I chuck this on my lathe and drill a 3 quarter inch hole in the center. Then in a fraction of a second, I mess it up real good. In fact, I made the hole even bigger than 7 8. <sighs> I didn't want to use my CNC for this, but I have no choice. First, I try to cut a 22 mm hole just to see if it will work. 
my great surprise, it worked like a charm. So I cut more pieces of plywood from the base of the station and make a 22mm hole in two pieces. The center layer is easier, but my pieces are a bit too big. Uh, the big blade on my Bensa is not the best to cut plywood. I have to sand this a bit. Then I can pound the bearing into place. And glue another wheel. I use a drill bit the size of the bearing zone to remove the glue that may have seeped into it. When I'm satisfied that there's no glue left, I can go into the shed and get an old bench grinder that I had stored in there. But it's a motorless one. <laughs> no problem, I have a motor lying on the floor of my shop. But its spoon is way too big for my taste. Again, no problem. In the shed, I have a box full of pulleys. <laughs> yes, to Rene's despair, I keep a lot of stuff, just in case. Here, I'm pretty glad I have those. I look into the surprise box to find the smallest pulley I have. I found two, but their holes are way too small. I drill a bigger hole with a step bit. I drill from both sides. Since I now have a hole with the center too small, I use one of my grandfather's reamers to enlarge it. This really does a great job and in no time I'm finished. Eh, but it's not enough. I need to remove more metal. Eventually I have a pulley on the motor shaft. I just need to secure it in place. Now I can try the two main parts of my station. This will be perfect. I'm super happy. Now that the glue of the wheels is dry, I can turn them. From time to time I stop and check their circumference. If you want to stop this video, because I'm going nowhere, <laughs> just wait. It's not over and I mess up again. I think that if I make a groove, a little bit like a pulley, the leather belt will ride into this channel. But this was far from reality. You will see. But for now, it's what I do. On both wheels on top of it. But to see this won't work, I have to remove the wire brush and the emery wheel from the grinder. I also remove the guards. I won't need them anymore. When it will be done, I will have a cotton wheel here and a leather strap on the other side. It will look a bit like that, but I need something to hold the top wheel in place. And why not use more oddly shaped plywood again? I begin by figuring out where I should drill the top wheel axle hole. When it's done, I put both sides together and drill both holes at the same time. It's now time to insert the rod into the bearings. Okay, not my brightest idea. Yes, it goes in, but I'm unable to get it out. So I tried the not so gentle way. Okay, on top of scrapping the bearing, I manage to bend the shaft. Not so bright after all. Now I have to cut a bit of the rod, throw it away and cut a more manageable length so it will be easier to file it a bit smaller. Perfect, but before I can try this, I have to modify the sides of the belt stand. After tracing the shape I need, I can use a hole saw and 
cut just a bit. If I continued cutting, the wood would get all burned. We can even see a bit of smoke with only this scoring that's been cut. So I chuck a Forstner bit in the drill press and drill a hole directly on the edge of the scoring cut. I put the old saw back again and finish it. See? No burn mark. This is because the sawdust had an exit. But it doesn't help a lot to get the piece out of the saw. I unscrew the bit and push it out. I finish the cut with my small band saw. This saw always has my smallest blade on. This way, the plywood is not damaged. By using this as a template, I can trace the shape of the other side and cut it. Now I can try this for the first time. It didn't take long before I noticed that my pulley idea was not so great after all. I went back to the lathe and cut a crown, just like a mensa. And now this works like a charm. I'm super confident about my station. But I need to glue more pieces of plywood together to hold the two sides together. As you can see, it's all scrap pieces of plywood glued together. But still, I need to wait for the glue to dry. The next morning, I remove all the excess plywood and make sure I have one side straight on both glue ups. Then it's possible to make two more sides straight. But I still need to remove more from this glue up. I trace it and remove it. Now it's time to screw this to the sides without forgetting to put the belt in place. This works even better than I was expecting. I can do the same thing for the top part. After tracing where the top should go, I pre-drill some holes on one side. Put the top in place, clamp it and screw it in place. But it's way easier for the other side since the parts are not moving anymore. Now it's time to give this a more elegant shape. This bothers me. I cut it straight. I cut another scrap piece at the same grain angle and glue it to the side. I only use blue tape to add clamping pressure. To make sure it will stay flat, I put a bit of weight on top. While the glue dries, I can take care of the base.
Now that I have a nice square base, I can figure out where to put the mortar. Then the grinder. Now I can drill the holes for the carriage bolts. I begin with a small one. Turn the base upside down and with a Fortner bit, drill a hole for the carriage bolts heads, using the small holes as guides. I turn this again and drill the bolts holes. Now I can try this in place. Okay, the carriage bolts are way too long. Wow, this is really starting to take shape. After all this, the glue up is dry enough so I can shape it like the other side. This is perfect, but for this to really work, I need to add a shim under the wheel assembly. I cut a strip of plywood and screw it in place. This is perfect, but since I've lifted up the whole thing, I need to make space for the flange now. The more I keep working on it, the happier I get. This works like a charm. I just need to screw it to the base now. Perfect. But I need something so I can push the gouges on the leather. I'm going to use this piece of wood that's lying on the floor. It's just a tan too wide, so I lift my junter table and remove just a sliver. Perfect now. I only need to cut one end at 45 degrees. I put it in place, mark what I need to cut and cut the other side. This is perfect, but the ends are a bit too sharp for the leather. I bevel both ends and make sure the tip is really not sharp at all. Then the cutoff is glued to the other piece. Now I just need to wait for the glue to dry. When it is, I screw the back support in place. This would be enough for all my carving gouges and knives but I might also want to be able to retouch some regular chisels. For this, it would be nice to have an adjustable back support. So I go into Aspire and draw this, so I will be able to change the support's angle. And again, I use odd-shaped pieces of plywood to cut the two supports. Ah, uh, yes, this could have been cut with a scroll saw, but I add the G-code file in end. This was way easier on the CNC. But still, it's not as fast as this. Now I just need to make the support. To be able to tilt up to the leather, I have to remove a bit of wood. Now I'm ready to apply the finish. But before I do, I would like to have a carving of my woodpecker logo on the sides. Again, this is super easy with Aspire. I just have to import a bitmap and turn it into a vectorial shape that I can export as a V-carve. With this file, I can go to the CNC and carve them. 
one carving is facing right, while the other one is facing left. Even if this is exactly what I want, I would like this to be more visible. So I brush a coat of shellac on the birds. When it's dry, I carefully paint inside the vis. This is not very fast. I take care not to overpaint. Eh, but it's not that critical. It's the reason why I've brushed a coat of shellac to make sure the paint wouldn't sip into the wood. I'm super careful around the eyes and the beak. For the rest of it, I was maybe not so meticulous. When I'm done, I just have to wait for the paint to dry. But since it's water-based paint, this won't take a lot of time. After a short while, I sand off one corner of the shellac. With only this small part sanded, I go back to the CNC and burn the date on both sides. After all this, the paint is dry enough so I can remove all the shellac. Uh, I think uh, next time I will do this differently. No, not because it didn't do a great job. On the contrary, this is great. But because I scrapped two brand new pieces of sandpaper only for removing the shellac. Now I can brush on the first coat of varnish. There aren't a lot of pieces, so this doesn't take long. Now I just need to wait for the varnish to dry so I can scrub the surface and wipe another coat. Now it's time to assemble it. Install the chisel support. This will be perfect. I'm very pleased. But I have one small problem. I didn't realize that the screws were exactly at the spot where the locking mechanism should be. I need to move the screws. Then I can make bigger holes and tap them. I put the guide back into place. Perfect. Now I can install the cotton wheel in place. But since its hole is bigger than my grander's shaft, I have to manually try to center the wheel. Ah, not bad. This will do. Here it is, my sharpening station. Uh, but starting it by plugging it into the wall is not ideal. So I'm going to install a switch. Done. This is way better. But now I have to put it there. This means that I need to have a bit of space. No problem. It's that easy. I should make more tools so I would have more clean spaces in my shop. But uh, I don't know how long this will stay like that. But still, this looks good just there. Now I need to charge a layer with some abrasive paste. Uh, this doesn't go that well with the motor running. So I stop it and charge it by hand. It's a bit more work, but at least I'm able to put a bit more. 
I also charged that cotton wheel. Now it's time to try this for the first time. With the leather spinning this way, it's much easier to see if I have the right angle from the top. Now I can easily remove all the air from my arms if I wish. But to see if my knife really cuts, I like to do this. I can also sharpen my carving gouges. With my guides, retouching chisels is a charm. But you have to excuse me, I have a lot of gouges to sharpen. This was my new sharpening station, made out of mostly scrap plywood. As a matter of fact, as you saw in this video, it's quite easy to make. So if you find a grinder like that in the flea market, you'll know what to do with it. And see you soon with sharper gouges on the woodpecker.